from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. Well, good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, he says conservationists and sportsmen can agree on this public lands management idea. We're going to find out why one Nevada U.S. Congressman is pushing for a bill he says is a common sense solution to a year's old battle. And my, that uh, leader is my guest today, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Mary Lee. Well, it took two years to bring it about, but now it's being heralded as the gold standard for community-based wilderness proposals. And today on Ion Washington, we'll tell you about bipartisan legislation that's aimed at protecting thousands of acres of public lands for sportsmen and conservationists alike. We'll tell you why my guest is especially involved in fighting for the passage of this bill. And we'll tell you a bit about his membership on the House Natural Resources Committee, whose jurisdiction includes our public lands. Last November, as a Congress that couldn't agree on much of anything argued right up into the recess, the five members of Nevada's congressional delegation, they united together to introduce a bill designating 26,000 acres in the northwestern Nevada Pine Forest Range as federally protected wilderness. The Pine Ridge Recreation Enhancement Act is the result of a two-year-long two local effort. Humboldt County landowners, sportsmen, conservationists, and other stakeholders developed the proposal through a series of public meetings and then presented it to the delegation with broad community support. Now we're going to detail the bill a bit in our next segment, but we're going to focus first on the unique way it came to be. All our delegation members have praised it as the product of hard work by local Nevadans and not something initiated in Washington. And both the Nevada State Legislature and the Secretary of Interior praised the inclusive local process that led to the bill. Uh, being the gold standard for how best to develop wilderness-related bills. And my guest made a point uh, about that in a statement he made last November when he said, quote, it's important to recognize that the Pine Forest Wilderness Act is a community-driven plan that represents the consensus of Humboldt County shareholders on how to preserve this pristine wilderness while protecting and enhancing its historic uses. This model approach demonstrates that common sense solutions to our public land designations are possible when Nevadans have a seat at the table. And Congressman, here's a statement I liked from uh, Congressman Heck as well. He said, quote, rather than risking a plan developed and managed by bureaucrats in Washington, folks in Humboldt County took action and created a detailed management plan that works for them and helps protect Nevada's environment. And that was key to you, the person who actually represents the area that's yep. affected by this, right? Yep. It's, uh, and you've done a good job of describing it, Marilee, but it is those folks, they not only had a seat at the table, they had most of the seats at the table, so that when they came here for the legislative process, you had all the grassroots bases covered, um, people with different perspectives, it was just, it's, it's, the uh, blueprint for how things ought to go in the future. Well, sure, and, and both the Nevada State Legislature and the, uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, Secretary of Interior, they have praised it, calling it, the, quote, the robust and inclusive process. And again, you, you, you've you been thrilled that this came from the state and not from the feds. Yep, and, you, and we've seen in the past in Nevada where some of these proposals come from the other direction, and it's been phenomenally controversial and and ultimately not effective. So you'd love for the Interior Department to, to study this bill and to use it for other uh, other ways to go about preserving America's um, some some of the wilderness areas. Or well, I think I, I think the Interior Department uh, and, and I haven't spoken with uh, with Amy Luters on on this one specifically, but I'll tell you it'll be for as long as I'm around. That will be for future ones to say. Have we basically done this in the same way that the Pine Forest one was done? Tell us just a little bit more about how this bill came about. I know it was a two-year-long process. So, uh, you know, take us back. Uh, how did it start off in the state? How, what uh, what well, brought it's, these folks it's, together? Um, you know, it it's kind of goes back to the blueprint thing where you get people who, who understand the process in Washington but are working at the local level to bring all the local people together to talk with, you know, and, and, and you name the groups. You've got hunters, conservationists, uh, pro-wilderness folks, pro-multiple-use uh, uh, folks, all those folks together first, 
and had them working in the context of if we put this together, then this is the process in, in back in, in the Congress. And actually, the vast majority of the work, as is appropriate, should be done at that level so that the congressional stuff is pretty much here it is. We've touched bases with the local federal land managers. We've touched bases with all the local uh, stakeholders. And here's what we need the legislation to reflect. And there you go. Help our audience um, understand a little bit better the, the, the location uh, of the area of, uh, um, in question and also, too, why the whole delegation decided that it needed to be protected. Well, it's uh, once again, it was driven from the ground up. It's northern Humboldt County. Uh, beautiful, breathtaking area. There were a couple of proposed wilderness areas that were also involved in this, and one of the neat things that this did was those areas that were appropriate for inclusive in the, the pine forest uh, area were, but there were also other parts that weren't, and so they've been taken off the map. Mm -hmm. So we're also dealing with some proposed wilderness study areas that really didn't fit the criteria, but it's in the context of creating wilderness that does. So uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I dare say I haven't heard anything from back in Nevada from anybody going, this is the wrong thing to do. Well, that's, wow. I mean, that's good. I, I, it's got to be out there, but for all intents and that's purposes, I've heard and, and, and such a diverse group of, of people yep. coming together on it, too. When I on Washington returns right after this, we're going to tell you uh, more details on this bill. And later in the show, we're going to talk about the jurisdiction of the Natural Resources Committee, which our congressman serves on, and where bills like this are originated often in, uh, on Capitol Hill. It's right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. Brought to you by the National Mining Association. Caesars Entertainment, The Frias Companies, NV Energy, The Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, The Nevada Mining Association, Western Lithium Corporation, and Skyline Restaurant and Casino. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at NMA.org. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. Hey, it's embarrassing to be tackled by someone smaller than me. I look weak and effeminate, so now I'm overcompensating. I'd also be very ashamed by that. I'm not waiting until it happens to me to make you feel small. My dad taught me to be the alpha male, so now I'm gonna knock a tray out of your hands at lunch. Kids bully for all kinds of reasons. None of them are good. Know your kids' friends and monitor their social networking. Find more tips at flipthescriptnow.org. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of a bill that would preserve thousands of acres of Nevada public land and is being called a win-win for sportsmen and conservationists alike. We've been visiting with the Nevada leader who represents that beautiful area, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark yeah, Amade. Really. The process that led to the Pine Forest Wilderness Bill was unique to say the least. Two years in the making, bringing together folks from many walks of outdoor life who together reached an agreement on how to permanently protect one of Nevada's most beautiful unspoiled areas. The designated area includes two wilderness study areas, the Blue Lakes region and the Alder Creek area. The bill designates 26,000 acres within these two study areas as the Pine Forest Range Wilderness Area. 
and it directs the BLM to exchange federal lands surrounding nearby ranches for private parcels within those designated areas. Now, advocates say this exchange will allow better management of public lands while ensuring the economic viability of privately owned ranches. The Pine Forest Range Towns Taylor made for a Nevada tourism, or excuse me, Nevada tourism brochure. It has high alpine lakes and rivers surrounded by granite spires that are home to the Lahontan cutthroat, uh, cutthroat trout, and that's a fish native only to Nevada. It has thick forests of aspen and white, park, uh, white bark pine that blanket the mountains that are home to mule deer, and the steep slopes that open uh, sagebrush meadows where bighorn sheep and pronghorn thrive. And if that's not enough, the area also is a sportsman's paradise. It's known across the West for its world-class chucker hunting. Fishermen dig the area and anglers and non-anglers alike can hike up to Duffer Peak, whose 9,400 plus feet makes it the highest mountain in the range. And, and Congressman, you know, again, this was the work of the Humboldt County Commission and the Pine Forest Working Group, and, and it was, and then it brought in you and other congressional leaders on this local effort. Um, Again, take us back again. You know, we went back a couple years ago, but a, a little more about the players and, and re what really kicked this off. Who said this needs to be protected and let's start a local movement? Well, I think it was the folks in Humboldt County that, that had watched over the years the process in Nevada with wilderness study areas and lack of movement, um, and especially lack of movement without a lot of controversy. And, and I'll tell you what I think the, the impetus was were people who had a genuine affection for the area mm -hmm. and wanted to say, let's do something that's different and let's take control of it, it locally in our own hands and get the right thing done. So when you talk about your lead in and you talk about uh, sportsmen, big game, chucker hunters, uh, property rights, there were water rights provisions in the bill, um, uh, access is always a big issue in any Nevada wilderness context. So sat down and basically in a reasonable, non-political fashion uh, very practically worked all that stuff out so that private property interests were taken care of mm. access for purposes of multiple use to the extent that it's allowed um, was taken care of existing access was taken care of and where those things were thought to be inconsistent then people were basically put in a position where they where they got um, s similar types of property rights outside the area that allowed them to continue doing what they want mm. what they want in exchange for for, for giving up their rights inside the area. And, and as you pointed out in our in our last segment, it is, is amazing that there, you're not hearing a peep of this isn't quite right, because especially when it's a, a lands or environmental issue, yeah. um, you do oftentimes on some of these situations, you get a lot of protests and anger. Chucker hunters are happy, Jeremy's the happy. ag folks are happy, uh, you, you know, the uh, the wilderness folks are happy, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like, going to court and doing an adoption, everybody's smiling so far. <laughs> you know, I like this quote I have here from uh, Senator Heller, and he, uh, you know, he, when you all announced your bill, he said, quote, in a state where the federal government controls more than 85% of the land, changes to public land designation must be done in a careful and open manner that brings local communities and stakeholders to the table. And uh, it, in your opinion, how, how can this great effort perhaps I I encourage land exchanges elsewhere, uh, both in Nevada and other states that have a, a whole lot of um, public land ownership by the You know what I think it is? It's, it's discussions. One of the things that facilitates that is, is you start discussions before it's on the board, if you will. Mm -hmm. Because if something's on the we had we had a fairly negative experience with Esmeralda, uh, uh, Lyon, and Mineral Counties a few years ago, where actually there was never a bill back here but there was the perception that things were going and maps were being circulated and it was awful. Mm. Uh, and so before you get to the map stage or this or that, it's like get the folks together, have them start talking when it's free, if you will, as opposed to this map or that map or we need an amendment. It's like it's still in the formative stages. Then I think people's blood pressure is a lot lower right. and where you can go is pretty much unlimited. You know, as we wind down this segment, is there anything else important about your bill that I didn't get to? And uh, I'm assuming uh, the, the delegation certainly is showing the bipartisan support. Is there any opposition uh, that you know on the Hill or N anybody? Who's None that I'm aware of yet. I think the most important thing for us in Nevada is this. This is the way to do it. Now, it doesn't mean that there's not other ways, but this is a way that has proven uh, remarkably non-controversial. And when we look at public lands bills, 
over the last decade or two in Nevada, there's always been plenty of opportunity for controversy, and so this is notable. We're going to talk about the committee you're on that deals with public land and a whole lot of other things that Nevadans care about, and that's right after this. Stay with us. Every day, thousands of people in northern Nevada don't get enough to eat. One out of five children in northern Nevada go to bed hungry every night. But you can do something about it. Catholic Community Services of Northern Nevada has been providing help and creating hope in our community for more than 65 years. By donating food, time, or money, you can make a difference in a hungry person's life. When you make your generous donation to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, you're helping to fight the scourge of hunger in Northern Nevada. In these tough economic times, now more than ever, we need to help those less fortunate. To find out how you can donate to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, call, click, or stop by. And together, we can end hunger in Northern Nevada. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. technology make our lives better. Will geothermal, wind, and solar energy be a bigger part of our future? Yes. And soon it will all be in our backyard. Learn more at nvenergy.com. Now we're back with the Eye on Washington show and our discussion of some public land and other natural resources committee topics. And my guest today is Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. The legislation we've discussed today obviously is something very important to my guests, but given the amount of time that went into it on the local level, shows that it might be more important to the Nevadans who are impacted by it. So isn't it great news for Nevada that our congressman serves on the House Committee from which this type of legislation can originate on Capitol Hill? The House Natural Resources Committee has has jurisdiction over a whole lot of areas that Nevadans care most about. There are 20 areas of committee jurisdiction, so I'll highlight just a handful of the ones you might be more interested in, and my guest will let me know if I've missed any biggies. Public lands, mining interests generally, mineral resources of public lands, fisheries and wildlife, interstate compacts relating to apportionment of water for irrigation purposes, irrigation and reclamation, including water supply for reclamation projects, and easement of public lands for irrigation projects, and relations with Native Americans and Native American tribes. And actually, Congressman, there's a whole lot more. If we get time in this segment, I'll touch on some of the more national uh, in focus topics. But let me put it this way, you know, um, I'm going to take three guesses why you so much wanted this assignment, which you talked about even during the election. You were excited to hope that if you were elected, you'd get on natural resources. I'm going to guess 
mining water lands and uh, this could pretty much be called the Nevada Issues <laughs> Committee couldn't it? You're, you're, you're warm so far you're, <laughs> you're doing well uh, you know there wasn't an opening on the committee and and when you come in the middle of a session like I did that's a you know that's something that usually closes that door I owe and, and the state owes a tremendous vote of uh, or, or tremendous uh, word of thank you to Representative Fleischman from Tennessee who was a freshman on the committee who who voluntarily stepped aside wow. to open a seat and and the reason he did it of course was or, or, or one of the things that was influential on him is here's a district that's 85 percent owned by the federal government so when you talk about the things that you profiled in the lead-in it's like those are all magnified in importance tremendously when you're 85 percent federal jurisdiction land sure. and so the fact that, that he said I'm gonna do this because I think you should be there and that the lead and leadership supported it I will just tell you what I've told him is anytime you need your car washed you <laughs> let me know if you need your lawn mowed anything else like that yard work in Tennessee I'm there for you tell us a little more about why Nevada should care so much that you're on this well it's the primary jurisdiction for federal land use that's BLM and Forest Service uh, you touched on on the water issues uh, tribal issues uh, in, anything that Mining. relates to uh, you know minerals uh, all that stuff energy production so when you talk about land management in a Nevada CD2 sense it's 85 percent of that land jurisdiction goes pretty much through this committee you've said you have a, a, a big interest in uh, public lands um, and and of course uh, you've touched on some stuff in, in the past about water I do want to tell our eye on Washington audience that um, I, I might have touched on this in a previous show uh, the congressman and I actually met about three or four years ago you actually flew to Washington when you were head of the Nevada Mining Association you did a one-on-one yeah. -on -one with me on on mining issues so I, I know that uh, when you were rallying, lobbying, whatever word we want to use to get on this committee, I know that mining was a big thing for you, wasn't it? And, yeah, you, and you have a lot of expertise in mining. Well, it's, uh, I don't have a lot of expertise. The mining people will tell you that, but I've got enough to be dangerous. Um, but when you look at the part that that plays in our economy sure. and the fact that that commodity looks like it's going to be strong for a while, good news, bad news, uh, uh, that, that's something that if you're going to take care of CD2 and the state of Nevada, that's one of the primary industries that you need to basically be fully familiar with and in a position to, to do them as much good as you can. And when the bills originate in those committees, yep. you're going to have a lot of say and sway over some stuff important to Nevada. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> you know, just for fun, some of the uh, other oversight, I uh, tell my audience quickly, um, the, the committee also covers uh, forfeiture of land grants, the geological survey, which is always in the news, or not always. But where where the there. lines are in most of our state. The international <laughs> fishing agreements, marine affairs, oceanography, the transatlantic oil pipeline, uh, preservation of prehistoric ruin, which I found interesting. Here's an interesting one. Petro uh, petroleum conservation on public lands and conservation on the radium supply in the United States. Who knew? Well, you know, it's an interesting committee because within the last few weeks, I mean, we've had hearings on drilling on the outer, on, on the outer continental shelf. Uh, when you talk about energy issues, we've had hearings uh, oversight of Department of Interior. Uh, Mr. Salazar, Nevada's Bob Abbey for BLM was there. Uh, just left a hearing with the Fish and Wildlife Service on the Endangered Species Act, uh, with the sage grouse stuff going on in Nevada, tremendous importance in CD2. So it's so too it's, bad you won't be busy. It's just been, uh, <laughs> like I said, anytime Mr. Fleshman needs his car washed, I'm there That's for great. him. I'm sure Nevadans are glad too. We're going to be right back with the closing segment of Ion Washington, our mailbag segment, right after this. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at NMA.org.
The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Built on a fleet of just five cabs bought in 1966 by founder Charlie Frias, Frias Transportation is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Today, Frias has a fleet of nearly 1,000 vehicles and more than 2,000 employees. As an industry and community leader, Frias continues to create the future of transportation technology and management and actively supports the community. Continuing the legacy of quality service in the Las Vegas Valley. Simply the best. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. We're back with our closing segment of Eye on Washington. It's our mailbag segment. In this segment, we tell you about an issue that the Congressional Mailbag page of Joyce Communication website has been getting a lot of correspondence about. We read one of your letters on the air and invite our guests to respond to you right here. And Congressman, uh, your office has been hearing a lot about uh, federal spending. And I, I have a, a letter from you, uh, for you here from uh, Jennifer of Elko. Okay. And she writes, Dear Congressman Amade, I'm concerned that cuts to federal spending will reverse some recent gains in services for retired and elderly people in Nevada. What's being done to make sure we preserve things that we now depend on with the economy being so bad? How do you respond to Jennifer? Well, J Jennifer, first of all, you're in the majority with your concerns. Uh, you know, the whole budget process is a series of value judgments. And so people say, well, there's not enough money. What are you going to do? Clearly, uh, for what we have started our elderly folks on in the way of benefits. I'm not going to call everything entitlements because I don't think Social Security is an entitlement. Mm -hmm. If Jennifer's on Social Security, she paid into that. Mm -hmm. So that's a little different thing. But uh, I'll tell you some of the things we're doing, we're working on right now, the doc fix for Medicare. So that uh, instead of just saying, well, you have a Medicare benefit, but by the way, nobody will see you because it pays so low that, that they can't see you. We're trying to work on that so that that still remains an access to health care benefit in a legitimate sense. I can tell you that we are committed to bringing government into a stage where we see the end of $15 trillion debts and stuff like that, but we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater to do it. So, Jennifer, you, you, you've got her back. Yep. Just <laughs> like my mom. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here today on Thank all Thank you. This. Appreciate it. That does wrap up this week's Eye on Washington. Please join us next time when we talk about more congressional matters that especially matter to you in Nevada. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington. Good day.